Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Winecast. I'm your host, The Unknown Winecaster, and I'm here to get you some information about all things wine, the vine, and the grape, because I figure that the more you know about them, the better you'll be able to enjoy them. Now, since this is the first Winecast, I thought it might be a good idea to start with talking about the European Union and the way it and its member countries classify wine. I'm thinking this is a good place to start because the EU takes in every significant wine-producing country in Europe, with the exception of Switzerland and some of the members of the former communist bloc. And together, these countries produce 60% of the world's wine, and that's not small potatoes, not small grapes, not small anything. The EU was formed in 1993, and its purpose was to make commerce easier between member countries and to promote more efficient and effective trade with non-European or non-member countries in Europe. Now, let's be honest, this is Europe, so one of the ways they accomplish these goals was by instituting a complex system of regulations, particularly overseeing food products, and that includes wine. This was actually a pretty tricky endeavor because a lot of EU members already had regulation schemes in place for food and wine, and the EU had to be sure that anything they did didn't cause pandemonium by replacing a system that the locals were happy with and maybe even more importantly familiar with. The solution they came up with was pretty genius, truth be told, and it involved creating a tiered framework that member countries could fit their own systems into. The version of this system that was promulgated in 2009 has three tiers to it, and it usually gets compared to a pyramid like this. The top tier, or the PDO designation, stands for Protected Designation of Origin. And the second tier, or the PGI designation, stands for Protected Geographical Indication. And the bottom, or the wine tier, stands for, well, wine. Now, I actually put the cart before the horse, or if you're fonder of enological cliches, the red before the white here, because the 2009 system replaces an earlier two-tiered system that looked like this. In that system, the top tier was called QWPSR and stood for quality wine produced in specified regions. And the bottom tier was called table wine and actually pretty much stood for not-so-quality wines. In fact, one of the reasons that the 2009 system was developed was to get past the negative associations that the phrase table wine had taken on in the context of European winemaking and allow for the possibility that wines people would actually want to drink could be made at all tiers in the system. We're not going to talk too much about the older two-tiered system now because you're not too likely to encounter it as a typical wine consumer, but that system does play an important part in the backstory behind the Super Tuscan movement in Italy, so keep it on deck and we'll come back to it in a future cast. For now, let's take a closer look at the 2009 system and see what each of these tiers is really about. For a wine to qualify for the highest tier of the classification pyramid, the PDO level, 100% of the grapes that it's made from have to be made, grown in a clearly and specifically defined area, and the wine has to be produced in that area. Each of these areas is defined by the member country, along with a set of very specific parameters that regulate different aspects of the winemaking. The area and the parameters are registered with the EU, and this is where things start to get really interesting because at this level in the classification scheme, the regulations for wine made in each of these areas can actually get very specific, regulating everything from what grapes can be used to make wine, to how much each hectare of land can yield, to specific practices in the vineyard and in the winery. If the wine produced meets the specifications for the area, then it can be designated as a PDO wine, and the implication is that this is a quality wine because it was produced following parameters that would guarantee quality. What you may not see on the label, though, are the words protected designation of origin, either in English or in the local language. Instead, you're likely to see a traditional local term. Here's an example. In France, the PDO level of the pyramid is called either AOC, for Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, which is the traditional term, or AOP, Appellation d'Origine Protégée, which is closer to a translation of PDO, and these are what you're going to see on a wine label, like this one. Here's the language that identifies it as a PDO level wine, Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, and then right above it is the name of the specified region. Now, here's another example of the same thing, but it's using the AOP designation instead of AOC. But like the last label, there's language identifying it as a PDO designation, Appellation d'Origine Protégée, and then the name of the region specified right above it. You also might see a variation like this, with the name of the region placed between the words Appellation and Contrôlée, or between Appellation and Protégée. 
Either way, all of the labels that we saw indicate the same thing, that the wine was made in a specific region from grapes grown exclusively in that region and was made following a very specific set of regulations designed to ensure quality. So what about the PGI wines? Well, if you see a PGI designation on a label, it means that at least 85% of the grapes used to make that wine were grown in a specified area and the wine was made in that area. So already you can see a little easing up in terms of the requirements for wine made at this tier. Note that the areas defined for PGI wines aren't the same as the areas defined for PDO wines. They do overlap with each other, but they have different names and of course different requirements. And in general, PGI areas are larger than corresponding PDO areas. Like the PDO areas, PGI areas are also defined by the local country and then registered with the EU along with specific parameters for winemaking. But these regulations are usually less strict and limiting than the PDO regs, and quite a bit strict actually. Also like the PDO wines, you're not necessarily going to see PGI or its equivalent on a label, but you might see a traditional term from the local country. So in France, you might see Indication Géographique Protégée, a pretty direct translation of Protected Geographical Indication, like you see on this label, with the name of the PGI region above it. Or you might see the older Van de Pay, which means country wine, followed by the name of the PGI region. And what about just plain old wine? Well, apart from basic regulations related to health and safety, this tier is pretty unregulated, um, both by the EU and the member countries. But one basic requirement is that grapes for this type of wine have to be sourced from the member country or at least from somewhere in the EU. Wines in this tier can also list a single grape variety or give a vintage date, as long as at least 85% of the wine is from the listed variety or the vintage. If they don't choose to list a variety or vintage, they'll just be designated as wine, red or white. In France, this tier is either designated as Van or Van de France, the difference being whether or not all of the grapes in the wine were sourced from France or whether they were sourced from another European Union country. And this is what you'd see on the label. So there you can see Vin de France in the upper left-hand corner. Now, before we finish up, we need to talk about one final important issue, and that's declassification. If a wine doesn't conform to the parameters and regulations for a particular tier of the quality pyramid, the wine can be declassified to a lower tier. So, for example, if a producer wants to make a wine from varieties that aren't permitted by the regs of the PDO area, where the grapes are grown, he or she can make a PGI level wine, assuming that the PGI regulations for that area allow those varieties to be used or allow whatever else he or she wants to do. This issue could be related to quality. Say the producer wants to use grapes that aren't well suited for growing in that area, but that there's still a market for. But a lot of the times, the issue isn't quality, but it's creativity. Some winemakers find the PDO level reg regulations stifling and limiting and want to experiment with other options. And the PGI level can be attractive to wine producers like this because it gives them the room to try different things. So while there is the perception that you're getting a wine of lesser quality the farther down the pyramid you go, that's not necessarily the case. Finally, the tier that a wine ends up on may have as much to do with the availability of a classification as it does with where the winemaker wants to put it. See, not all areas have all three designations, so in some parts of EU member countries, the pyramid looks a little more like this. Now, another example from France can make this a little bit clearer. This is Beaujolais, and the different colored areas that you see are all PDO or top tier level appellations. Beaujolais doesn't have a PGI level, at least not yet, and so a wine that's made there that doesn't conform to the PDO level parameters for the area it's made in has to be classified as a Vin de France, the lowest tier on the pyramid. That's what happened to this wine that we saw earlier. Though it doesn't say so on the label, it's made in Beaujolais from grapes grown in the Morgon AOC, but for various reasons, it doesn't meet all the requirements to be labeled a Morgon AOC wine, but by all accounts, including my own, it's really pretty good. And an even more interesting example is this wine from Chateau Palmer, a crazy famous chateau from one of the five classified Bordeaux growths. In the 19th century, it was a pretty common practice in Bordeaux to blend Syrah from the Rhone Valley into their wines to give them additional body. That practice has since been seriously kicked to the curb at both the PDO and the PGI levels for Bordeaux, at least for the part of Bordeaux that Chateau Palmer is in. But Chateau Palmer wanted to issue a wine that commemorated the practice, and it had to be designated as a Vin de France, 
or using the pre-2009 designation of Vendée de Taube Francais. Yeah, this is technically a bottom-tier wine, but it'll cost you close to $200 a bottle if you want to buy it. As interesting as those examples are, though, it's important to remember that most of the wines made at this level are actually taking advantage of the lack of regulation in order to produce a lot of cheap, low-quality wine. Well, that's this episode of the Winecast. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe and tell others about it if you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment below, look for new episodes, and meanwhile, enjoy the grape, but always enjoy it responsibly.